Good afternoon. I don't know if you've been counting, but uh, I'm the last of the 11 speakers, and I, I think other than Carl is going to come up after to kind of close the conference uh, when I'm done. Uh, my name is Bruce Brabeck. I'm the board member of the Pipeline Safety Trust, uh, the treasurer. Uh, and um, let me get a slide here. And this picture here is one of those kind of pointed ends of the arrow that uh, Mark Rosekind uh, from NTSB talked about yesterday morning at the beginning of the conference. It is from June 10, 1999 in Bellingham, Washington. And this, uh, this, the end of this pointed arrow was the beginning of my involvement with, with pipelines and with pipeline safety. Because on that date, my 18-year-old stepson, Liam Wood, um, died as a result of the gas, uh, this, this liquid gasoline pipeline rupture and explosion. Uh, within a few days after that, uh, Liam's mom and I were invited and got involved with a group called Safe Bellingham, you see up in the corner there. And this group was formed as a result of the incident and it was made up of, of local citizens who were asking the questions, how could this have happened and what could be done to prevent it from happening again? And in the process of trying to get the answers to those questions, we found out things like, we learned that pipeline safety was not being adequately addressed at many, many levels. We learned that it wasn't just a local issue, but that it was a national problem. And we learned that what was significantly missing from conversations about pipeline safety was a public voice, the voice of those of us who are most affected by pipelines. So as a result, uh, the group, our group, uh, Safe Bellingham, ended up proposing to the Department of Justice uh, that criminal penalties be made available from, uh, to establish an independent organization, one that would work to improve pipeline safety and ensure citizen participation and representation with, with regard to local and national pipeline safety issues. The U.S. Attorney supported our proposal uh, to the judge in the federal criminal case against Olympic Pipeline. And U.S. District Court Judge Barbara Rothstein saw the value of the request and she awarded $4 million to support the creation of the Pipeline Safety Trust. In court, she said, there's going to be a trust that's going to be funded as part of today's sentencing. With $4 million, they're nowhere near the lobbying potential of the oil industry. It's not even David and Goliath. It's more like Bambi and Godzilla. You've heard people today that are going to spend their lives You've heard people today that are going to spend their lives trying to make this right, and they should be listened to. No industry places itself very well. You need outside people, and these are going to be the people, so pay attention to them. So as one of the founding board members, um, I have felt taken on and felt the responsibility to take a lead role in protecting and growing that initial investment that we were awarded from the courts because I wanted to see a pipeline safety trust that could sustainably carry out its mission long into the future. The board uh, initially set us, decided to set aside the, those funds as an endowment, and we've actually been using the earnings from the, our investments to operate the pipeline safety trust. And over the years, we've brought in additional funds from foundations, public grants, and uh, donations. And with the financial resources that we have, the Pipeline Safety Trust has been able to play an important role in improving pipeline safety uh, at a local and national levels. But there continue to be new tragedies like San Bruno, like Allentown, like Marshall, Michigan, and like many of the other stories that you've been hearing throughout this conference. And these are, continue to be reminders that there's just much more that needs to be done. So the concern I've been bringing up today is that there's a growing concern for the Pipeline Safety Trust that as these tragic incidents, as tragic incidents continue to happen and as requests for information and support from us steadily have been increasing, it's become clear that we're limited in what we can do by the level of income that we currently have. So we face the challenge that we need to to garner more resources to help us increase our capacity and our effectiveness as an organization and be able to provide support to the many others that are seeking help. In recent years, we've increased our fundraising efforts and uh, 
as Carl mentioned, I hope you are reminded that we are a nonprofit organization that accepts that, uh, and your donations to us would be tax exempt. There's an envelope in, the, in your, uh, that he pointed out in your uh, packet, but also you can get information on our website. But in addition to that fundraising effort, we, uh, uh, we are, as we did in Bellingham, we are now putting efforts into seeking funds from the possible penalties and settlements connected to, to these and other tragic incidents around the country. I bring this up today because I just want you to be aware of these efforts and keep that in mind because maybe there's a, a role you can play in supporting those efforts uh, in the communities that you're in. The bottom line is that we're seeking opportunities to increase the capacity of the Pipeline Safety Trust so that we can better meet our mission. So that perhaps as it has been for Marlene and I and for Bellingham, we can ensure that out of these tragedies, uh, we'll see increased efforts and success in improving pipeline safety at local, regional, and national levels. In memory of Liam, and perhaps to paraphrase as Judge Rothstein said, to spend my life to make this right, I've stayed involved with the PST for many years now. Um, many years because 18-year-old Liam would be 31 now, uh, turning 32 in, in another month. And when Judge Rothstein awarded us those funds initially, initially, I have felt a real responsibility, a personal responsibility, to protect and grow those funds, <clears throat> excuse me, to make sure that the PST became a sustainable and strong organization, and one that, whoa, what happened? Oh well. One that was credible, independent, and in the public interest. I can, I feel I can proudly say that that has happened. And I think this conference is a, a testament to that. But now, I, have a, I feel like I have a new role, and that is I'm committed to helping the organization increase its capacity because of those, of those increasing requests for support, because of the continuing tragedies we're seeing. And we need to, uh, so I'm committed to helping our, the PST now increase its capacity and its outreach to add to its successes so that more families and communities don't have to experience what happened in Bellingham, what's happened in Allentown, what's happened in San Bruno, what's happened in Marshall, and in many other towns and communities, as I said, that you've been hearing about throughout this conference. We hope that with your support, we continue to be, have the success and, uh, and grow in, in our success. And I thank you for being a part of our conference and for letting us uh, speak today.